If you're a beginner in the wet on wet oil painting technique of Bob Ross, sometimes getting your evergreen trees to look just right can be a little bit challenging. So in this video, I'm gonna break it down for you step by step. You'll notice that my canvas already has a background on it. So it has liquid white underneath the phthalo blue. And I've already added my clouds and I've got a little piece of land here where we're gonna put the evergreen trees. On my palette, I have loaded mountain mix and sap green. I like to do three parts of mountain mix to one part of sap green. I'm going to take my number six fan brush and I'm going to drag it through the mountain mix and sap green mixture, coating both sides of the fan brush. And then I like to do a little wiggle through the paint just to make sure that it's evenly loaded and that the brush comes to a really nice chiseled edge. Once we have our fan brush fully loaded, let's go to our canvas. To begin your evergreen tree, you're just going to take the very edge of your fan brush and you're going to lightly tap it at the very top and then come down just a little bit weight, like halfway down the tree or so and leave yourself a nice little trunk indention. Then you're gonna flip your fan brush horizontal and you're going to just tap in, lightly tap, using just the corner of that brush, you're gonna tap in the very tip top of your evergreen tree. As you move down, you're going to do what, I, the technique that I was taught by Nick Hankins was middle, 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 and then you gently crawl out to the side. Let's start with that left side first, and then we'll go to the right. So I'm gonna go middle, 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 and I'm gonna, tap out to the right, middle, 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 tap out to the left, middle, 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 out to the right. And I'm loading my brush, reloading my brush frequently. And I'm also being cognizant to leave space. Bob used to say, leave space for the little animals to sit, the little squirrels and all the little creatures that live in the evergreen tree. So middle, 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 out to the left, out to the right. Middle, 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 out to the left, out to the right. And don't worry if you see too much space in your evergreen tree, because you can always come back and add in, in the spots where you need, where you feel like it needs a little bit extra. So like up here, I can go back in and I can add a little bit more to the middle. And that looks just great. So here I am back in the middle, out to the left, back to the middle, out to the right, flipping my brush over. You really want a lot of paint, but you're just using the very corner of the brush. And I'm gonna bring my evergreen down here and connect it and onto this piece of land. All right, so as Bob says, every tree needs a friend. So let's do this one a little bit crooked just to give it some personality. So again, I'm gonna touch the very top and I'm gonna bring the trunk down about halfway. Again, I'm not painting a trunk. I'm just showing the indication of a trunk. I do that very tip top. And notice how on the evergreen, The, uh, the, the branches at the top are a lot thinner than the branches down at the bottom. So as you start to move down towards the bottom, you just wanna be sure that you're pushing a little bit harder and when you push a little bit harder, those branches will just naturally spread out and get a little bit wider. And we're gonna connect it to our land down there filling in any spaces that we like. Okay, so next we're going to paint the inside tree trunk. I'm gonna switch over and grab a palette knife for that. Okay, so now for our tree trunk, I'm gonna use some dark sienna, just a smidge here. I'm gonna put that on the palette. I'm also going to take some titanium white. I'm gonna put that right next to my dark sienna. And next I'm going to blend them together. Now what I'm looking for here is a 
is a marbled effect. I don't want them perfectly blended into like a shade of light beige. And I'm gonna pull those paints down and then I'm gonna take the palette knife, just the edge, and I'm gonna cut across to just get a little roll of paint on there. Okay, so next I'm just going to take the palette knife and I'm going to just tap it and pull slightly to just show the indication of where a tree trunk would be. And as I move up, I do less pulling and just a little bit more of just a straight tap. So there's our nice tree trunk. You can also take the palette knife, the short edge of the palette knife, and just gently push the paint up and make a nice little sharp tip to your evergreen tree. A nice tip on this is to make sure that you don't pull it too far down because I find that it distorts the way that the branches look. So next let's add our highlights. Now that we're ready to add the highlights to our evergreen trees, what I like to do is take some cadmium yellow and add a little bit of liquid white to it I'm using my condiment bottle full of liquid white. And I'm gonna take my dirty brush that has all that mountain mix and sap green left over from our evergreens. And I'm just gonna drag it through the cad yellow and the liquid white. Actually, I might need a little bit more liquid white. You want your highlight color to be thinner than your oil paint that you use for your evergreen because in wet on wet oil painting technique, thin paint sticks to a thicker paint. So I've got a really thin, it's not inky, but it's a lot thinner paint than this evergreen paint. And I'm just, and I don't need it to be perfectly mixed. I like this marble. So I'm just pulling it through again. I'm dragging and dropping or dragging and wiggling my fan brush through, making sure that it's fully loaded. Now we're gonna go back up to our evergreens and highlight them. Something that you wanna be cognizant of or aware of when you're adding highlights to your evergreen trees are the direction of the sunlight. So I'm gonna pretend just for this purpose that our light is going to be coming from this direction onto our trees. So I'm gonna highlight mostly the right side of our evergreens, starting at the very top here. And I'm just holding my brush horizontal and I'm favoring that left side, but I'm also not ignoring the middle of the tree because if you highlight the middle of the tree, it makes the, it gives the appearance that the tree is a little bit more round. Okay, so I'm favoring that right side because that's the side that our sunlight is coming from. Now I'm gonna reload my brush, highlighting our tree's friend here. favoring the right side, but also making sure that I give a nice little round appearance. And then another tip that I like to use or be mindful of when I'm painting evergreen trees is to let them be a little bit darker down at the bottom because the sunlight wouldn't be hitting the bottom of that tree as much as it would be the top and the right side of that tree. So that's how you highlight your evergreen trees.